we are going to discuss now with uh, each uh, member of the panel uh, regarding their own country and, and what is the Merck more than a mother contributed to the infertility challenge in each country or will contribute from their uh, uh, point of view and experience uh, in each uh, position. So uh, my first question will go to Honorable Betty Amongi, the Minister of uh, Urban uh, Development and Land uh, in Uganda. Uh, of course, uh, um, we, we heard the stories and you already, of course, been with us in many uh, occasions uh, when we discovered thousands of infertile women in Uganda. You, uh, with uh, uh, also Honorable Minister of State of Health, Sarah Obindi, we made a big program for thousands of women across the country to uh, group them in uh, small groups to establish their own business and also raise awareness about uh, infertility. So from your point of view and your position as uh, also uh, Minister of Land and uh, Urban Development, how will you enforce policies to also empower women in your position? And uh, you give us a small brief about Mark More Than a Mother in Uganda. Mark More Than a Mother campaign, I think the initial period started with the Kenya and Uganda and we've been uh, trying very hard uh, in respect to raising awareness. What we've noted is that out there, there are many women who are suffering, but they cannot talk. Improving access to fertility care and raising awareness to destigmatize the community to support the women is at the core of the role of leaders, the role of members of parliament, the roles of the ministers, the roles of community leaders at the local government is important in raising awareness. As you've watched from the video, most of the women might actually have opportunity to get treatment through all the options that we know, but they do not have information. They are deep in the rural areas, they are deep in the villages, they are suffering with the stigma, but they don't have information of even where to go. And therefore, in Uganda, through the support of Mark, more than a mother, we started going to the community as women members of parliament, we started educating the local leaders to form support groups. We asked the women to come out and form groups to share information because we had information from the health care system on key issues around how you should seek um, intervention, how you should prevent STDs, all the other preventable causes of infertility you saw the woman who, who, who uh, aborted, uh, forced to abort, and that uh, go, uh, got an effect on her. So in that, we started that, that program. So we started from the village to the parish to the district and formed groups into 30 women per groups. And so women started coming out. Women started talking. We then started engaging the government on ensuring that we put up institution to support fertility uh, intervention. Now we have uh, two, two key fertility private center in Uganda. I'm glad one of our senior doctor who will be speaking, or I've already spoken, Dr. Lalobo, there as one of the great fertility center in Uganda. Uh, already in Uganda, we are creating two national, uh, four national women's referral hospital, equipping them with fertility intervention, the IVF that can support treatment of women, but also at the local level, at the district level, we are trying to establish uh, a desk that can support women who have been identified uh, to go to that to seek advice and information on how public, public and also we have the public IVF at the National Referral Hospital in Kampala uh, so um, and it's important really that we make the women into a support group system 
to make the leaders support women and leaders having information on where to refer the women. And of course, as a minister in charge of lands, housing, and urban development, I have had to, to get into the policy question. You saw the women there. In Africa, land and property is core to a woman's life. Because for a woman who gets married and does not produce a child, where you are married, inheritance is always attached to children. So for a woman who doesn't give birth, your lineage, your access to land will most likely be jeopardized because you don't have children. Because normally it's women with children that will be allocated land where to settle. Now, if where you're married, like the case of this woman, she is married, the husband says, you have not given me children, so at the end of it, the clan will say, let her go back where she is born. Then when you go back where you're born, your brothers and sisters, your brothers and in-laws will say, it is the brothers who are entitled to inherit land. So this woman therefore now starts hanging without anywhere to go. So with that also, we in, our, in my ministry are linking the rights of the women to property and land. How do we secure the right of a woman who has not produced to have her right of where to be buried and acted into law? That is where the question of land is very important, that we put a, a law that women's ownership to land is important because an identity of an African woman, of an African person, is hinged on land ownership, land access. And that's why you see in, in, in most of the African countries, most of the women who are barren will end up not having what to call a home. With the support of Mark more than a mother, also, most of these women are getting income-generating activity to support themselves, to purchase their property, to purchase their land. And in some circumstances, when they get this support from Mark more than a mother, then the husband starts changing, accommodating them, um, you know, having them more nearer because they have economic empowerment. And sometimes that will support the woman to at least be in a society where, the, where she can call home. So I want to congratulate Rasa for all the programs that you are, you are uh, spreading throughout Africa and, and Asia. And, and I want to ask us, the leaders, that let us speak for these women. Most times they don't have a voice, they cannot talk, they don't have information. It is only through us that we can give them information to seek remedy. To their problem. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. My second question go to uh, Honorable um, uh, Minister Cooper, uh, Minister of Health of uh, Sierra Leone. Uh, of course, we ha we've been in Sierra Leone, and uh, while we are at the airport, from the airport, women was waiting for us, young women who has no access to fertility care at all, 25, 26 years old, and maybe with a very small intervention, very small intervention, which cannot cost anything they can actually be uh, uh, restore their ability to have children and uh, treat their infertility. So uh, our first strategy was to train the first, first fertility specialist and first embryologist in Sierra Leone. So we make a history in the country where couples cannot have treatment of infertility in Sierra Leone. They have to go abroad or nothing at all. So I want uh, your contribution uh, to, to, to explain uh, the contribution and uh, your strategy to uh, make uh, access, uh, access to fertility care happens in Sierra Leone. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Rasha. Um, for all Sierra Leoneans, men and women, I would like to say thank you to God for the day I met you because um, unconsciously, even those of us who are educated, civilized, and are lucky to have children, tend to behave in a way that we do not really realize 
that we are stigmatizing women who don't have children. But the day I met you, we spoke about it, and like you said, we went to um, Sayadin together. I was on the air, gave out my phone number. I had so many calls. It's unbelievable. I even had to turn my office into a counseling um, haven for not only women, surprisingly men. I'm going to tell you a story about what happens when you talk to people about a certain topic. A couple came to me, a man and a woman. The woman is a teacher. The husband also a teacher. They've been married. Don't have a, uh, the woman doesn't have a child. And the husband had a child, quote, a child with a girlfriend. And he keeps rubbing it in the woman's face. And my first question to him was, how do you know that child is yours? Did you do a DNA test? Oh, no, there's no need to do it. How are you sure that child is your child? You do not spend 24 hours with the girlfriend. Do you know if she has another partner? Do you actually believe she's only sleeping with you? Two weeks later, he called me. I did a DNA test. The child is not mine. So who has the problem? It's not maybe. It's not only women. Men, African men, have to understand that the problem might not come from a woman. It might not. You might be looking for a child out there and somebody will say this child is yours and just because you're hungry, you're anxious to have a child, you'll accept that that child is yours. Another thing that I found out after I went on the radio, TV, talking to people, women started coming up. My husband is looking for a boy. I had to go back and explain. Women, we have only one chromosome, the X. The sex of a child lies on the man. You have X, Y. The reason why I'm saying all this is because it is very, very, very important. By the time you get back to Sayadion, we are ready. We are so ready. You have to make people understand. Stigmatization doesn't only come from not having a child. It comes also if you only can produce, you the woman, can only produce girls. Not my fault. If you cannot give me an X to match the Y, it's not our fault. So men also have to own up, especially African men. The sex of a child does not determine how productive a woman is or how effective you are as a husband. It doesn't. A child is a human being. Mark more than a mother is a blessing to Africa. It's a blessing to women. And if men accept that you, have, you don't have to be a mother to be a woman, it can also be a blessing to the men. Not everybody is destined to have children. Some people choose not to have children. So for those of us who are fortunate to have children, thank God, we're lucky. We are lucky. You do not ovulate every time. You might keep missing that ovulation period. So we are just lucky. Some people have, I mean, simple diseases, very simple. They don't know. Some of us are civilized enough to know how to do perennial care. But you have the woman in the village, in the urban and rural areas. They have to go to the farm. They don't have sanitary um, accommodations, facilities. They don't know how to wash themselves up. You can go from back to front, not knowing that you're creating an avenue for infectious diseases that can prevent you from having children. So we need to go back 
to our people. Go back and start. Sierra Leone has a very, very high illiteracy rate. So for us, it's more of teaching. And thank you very much. You already started. Mark Mother and Mother already started training our clinicians. I mean, two people have already gone. We are ready. We are ready. They're here. They're already here, Dr. Suleiman. Yes. Two of them are here. Capacity building. The first, first, this person. Yes. Dr. Conte, a very young guy. Can you stand up? <laughs> and Sophia and Cisse, all the way from the rural. Both of them young. So they can be able to train. Unfortunately, we don't have that many doctors in, in Sierra Leone. And most, most of them are not, well, I can't say they're old, but at least the young ones can keep training and training and training. So for Sierra Leone, we are happy. We will keep teaching. By the time we're ready to start the IVF clinic itself, it's a done deal. We're ready. Men, women keep coming to me. We are, like I said, ready to receive the first IVF baby. And I believe it will be a girl named after either Russia or Zulai. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. My third question goes to Honorable uh, Susan, the Minister of Women of South Africa. And uh, uh, of course, um, the first time, um, I mean, as, as newly, I mean, joining us for the first time in, uh, in um, Merck events and Merck More Than a Mother. So what do you think about the campaign and how do you think it will contribute to South Africa in terms of training or in terms of uh, raising awareness about infertility stigma and breaking the stigma of infertility in, uh, in South Africa and other African countries? Thank you. Thank you, Sisha, for that question. Uh, thank you for inviting us as South Africa, but also participating uh, in this meeting now. I must say that um, Mac Foundation and Mac More Than a Mother, one related quite clearly to South Africa. I think it's a relevant campaign for us because issues of health in South Africa are a priority, especially for women. Currently, we're running various programs which intend to address challenges which faced by women, including infertility. And why I'm saying that is that, um, as my sister from Uganda indicated, um, one of the critical issues is about women in the rural area, but the biggest challenge is about stigmatization when it comes to infertility. And as she indicated, it's a problem faced by Africa as a whole. But I also want to qualify that. It's not only Africa. This is a global problem for women. Um, it varies in terms of development by various countries. I think in Africa, as we say that, it comes with stigmatization, but also it also comes with the isolation of women as indicated in the video, by the immediate family, but also, if you are a married woman, by the in-laws, if you cannot give birth. So I think the key for me is to strengthen the campaigns of advocacy in making sure that we build awareness amongst not only women, including men, because we can continue empowering women as we do all the time, but we also have to build awareness amongst men because if you don't educate the men too, it means they'll be left behind and continue be in denial. So the campaign of uh, you are running currently becomes very important in the empowerment of women. And what I also like is that is the empowerment of women which also includes economic empowerment because economic empowerment brings self-esteem, dignity to women. Because part of the problem and the challenge we face also in South Africa is that when women are dependent, they become victims and they continue
to live in abusive relationships because they are unable to take care of themselves. So that's uh, some of the issues which we need to look at. Uh, and the, as a country, that's why health matters have become a priority, including ensuring that women understand they can also go for testing uh, for various uh, STDs. And it's not only women. It's also about educating men to stop being in denial because they always say when there's infertility, it's women who are infertile without themselves verifying whether they can give birth as men. So it takes both ways, both men and women. So for me, it becomes important that as we deal with empowerment of women and making sure that this campaign advances, it will also ensure that we don't leave men behind because you live with a society which continues to be lopsided towards a blame game towards women where men think that they are, you know, they are there, they can give birth when they have not made verification. So I think in South Africa, as we take this campaign forward, it would be right to make sure that also men participate, but also making sure that the campaign itself, it's linked to various health institutions and being promoted in the rural areas because that's where the major problem is, as we all know. And that's where we find men becoming abusive by thinking that uh, because they paid Lobola and they think that therefore they are entitled and they can provide. So we have to empower rural women by making sure that they understand their status, but also they go on regular checkups. That's what we are doing in South Africa to make sure that we continue advocacy in training women, in making sure that women understand their status, but also in making sure that access to health facility can reach out to rural communities, because that's where we have major problems. And I think that destigmatization campaign or awareness programs are very, very critical. And I like what my sister said, to say using media radio in reaching out to our communities become very important where the various messages can be carried through in ensuring that we reach out to all sectors of our communities because if we don't do that and we don't also skill women women will continue to be victims in their relationships because they always at the mercy of men so training capacitating women becomes very important for any country. And in South Africa, when we partner with yourselves and the foundation, that would be critical components which we'd like to advance. And not only that, the creation of professionals in these particular areas becomes very, very important in ensuring that we continue to develop capacity in our countries. We starting this year, uh, from, from this visit or this uh, event, to uh, roll out Merk Moors and a Mother in Niger. And uh, with uh, very uh, great honor that uh, uh, we have our, uh, Her Excellency First Lady to be the champion ambassador for Merk Moors and a Mother in the country. So as you role as a Minister of Health, how do you see, first of all, the fertility challenge in uh, Niger? and how will you see Merck Moors and a Mother will contribute to remove this challenge or the stigma of infertility and improve access to fertility care? Uh, merci. Uh, je vraiment profite de cette occasion pour uh, féliciter et remercier la Fondation Merck et pour avoir en tout cas invité mon pays et représenté ici par la première dame du Niger qui est accompagnée d'une forte délégation et dans moi-même le ministre de la Santé. Et cette fondation en tout cas sera accueillie en tout cas à bras ouverts au Niger parce que le problème de l'infertilité est pratiquement 
un problème euh, général, un problème qui concerne euh, tous les pays africains, dont euh, mon pays, le Niger, qui n'a pas suffisamment de ressources, euh, non seulement financières, et ressources humaines et les structures de santé adaptées pour faire face à ce véritable problème. Parce que l'infertilité est au-delà d'un problème de santé publique, c'est devenu un fléau social à travers les projections qu'on a vues, les femmes dont les mains sont coupées parce que le seul fait qu'elles n'accouchent pas, elles sont discriminées, elles sont blasphémées. Alors, et je ne suis pas l'avocat de la femme, mais et quand même, euh, on reconnaît que la femme est la mère de l'homme. Elle est la mère de l'humanité. Vous donnez un franc à une femme, toute la famille va manger. Mais vous donnez un franc à un homme, je pense que vous savez le reste. Et la femme joue plusieurs rôles au sein de la société. Ce n'est pas seulement le rôle de la procréation. On ne voit que le rôle de la procréation. Elle est avocate, tout à l'heure, un ministre qui m'a précédé l'a dit, elle est ministre, elle est parlementaire, elle travaille au champ, parce qu'il faut penser à ces femmes rurales, aujourd'hui, qui constituent 75% de ces femmes africaines qui font les travaux champêtres. Elle a aussi un autre rôle au niveau du foyer. Elle, est, elle assure l'éducation des enfants. Pendant le rôle de la, la procréation, la femme est confrontée elle met sa vie en danger, alors qu'une femme qui s'apprête à donner une, une, vie, mais une vie nouvelle ne doit pas risquer sa vie. Et c'est pour ça qu'un adage de chez nous dit qu'une femme qui est enceinte, on lui crée une tombe qu'on ne refermera que 40 jours après l'accouchement. Et de l'autre côté, une femme qui n'accouche pas également, elle court de risque parce qu'elle est stigmatisée, elle est abandonnée par sa famille. Donc, Merck est au-delà d'une mère. Merck je pense que c'est une famille pour les femmes, infertiles, et ce programme, en tout cas, serait le bienvenu au Niger, parce que c'est vrai, nous avons mis en place un certain nombre de mécanismes pour améliorer la santé de la reproduction, la santé de la femme, à travers la création d'un centre national de santé de la reproduction qui intervient dans le cadre de la prévention, puisque les causes, et du moins l'infertilité, a des causes multifactorielles. Au-delà de la femme, on ne voit que la femme. Il y a également l'homme. Il y a des études qui ont démontré que 30% des causes d'infertilité sont liées à la femme, 30% à l'homme, et 20% sont mixtes, la femme et l'homme. Les 20% qui restent, la cause est abstraite. Donc il faut agir Donc, sur les causes, sur les facteurs, à travers la sensibilisation. La sensibilisation ne doit pas être destinée uniquement à la femme, la, la, la sensibilisation est adressée aux hommes, à la société tout entière pour expliquer les différentes causes, les causes qui peuvent être infectieuses, les causes qui peuvent être inflammatoires, les causes, et, 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 en tout cas les causes multiples qui peuvent en tout cas être à la base de l'infertilité. Donc si ce programme arriverait en tout cas à vraiment attirer chez nous, je pense que ça va nous aider et à renforcer non seulement la prévention, mais également la prise en charge, parce que nous avons beaucoup de cas d'infertilité dans notre pays et que Merck, en tout cas, serait la bienvenue au Niger. Merci. Thank you very, very much. And uh, uh, that's why we have all uh, this platform. We have the International Federation of Fertility Society with us. We have Africa Fertility Society. So we can discuss in partnership how can we, first, of course, a training for the personnel, the staff who will run these uh, facilities and the IVF or simple fertility clinic, but also the role, uh, that's why my question will go to Professor uh, Joe Simpson. He is the past uh, president of International Federation of Fertility Societies. All fertility societies across the world under this uh, organization. So he can, easily, uh, he can easily talk to us about how can we uh, uh, start to mobilize maybe a small uh, uh, help or guidance or fund to build small fertility clinics uh, in these countries, uh, giving that the country or the Ministry of Health will give the premises, for example, the land and the building and everything ready just to put some equipment 
and the training will be done by Merck Foundation, and the equipment can be uh, uh, got from uh, you know low resources uh, countries as a start. What do you think? Yeah. Um, first of all, uh, Russia and uh, to the uh, other uh, authorities in the uh, Merck Foundation, I'd like to thank you for inviting me. It's been an excellent meeting. Uh, I've learned a lot already, and, 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 and still we have a lot to go here. Uh, I think it's worth taking a step back and reflecting, first of all, on what the Merck Foundation, Merck more than a mother program in particular, has accomplished worldwide. I don't think it's appreciated. For many, many years, uh, the World Health Organization has uh, considered the fertility field to be preventing fertility. It's as if it was not an issue. The pain of being uh, childlessness in Africa didn't matter because there were uh, other problems uh, that required the resources, and it just was not on the radar screen. And the mere fact that Burke took a stand and said, in these vulnerable co countries, improving rapidly, but still resource stressed, this was a major issue, I think opened eyes worldwide. And I cannot emphasize that, that as much. Uh, the only aspect of the World Health Organization that really had a focus in this area was preventing infertility, contraception and the likes of that. The fact that you have identified this as a problem has totally changed it, uh, along with the help of uh, organizations like uh, International Federation of Fertility Societies, the International Federation of Gynecology and Obstetrics, uh, European Society of uh, Human Reproduction, we now have a major focus at WHO on fertility capacity. That did not exist even three to four uh, years ago, and it's really predominantly due to the private-public partnership uh, that you have had. Uh, it has meetings like this and our ability to get together at meetings like Aspire, a Professor Singh's meeting, uh, has allowed uh, worldwide uh, individuals uh, who have been involved in global health to work more closely uh, with individuals who are here in sub-Saharan uh, Africa and in all of Africa. And that's invaluable because you move things forward on a sustaining level uh, because of that. And it's because of that capacity that we could begin to lend a worldwide <coughs> Uh, exactly the question that you posed. How do we train this? Well, you first of all have to have uh, uh, experts who are capable of doing this. There are plenty of experts in uh, Africa. We've already, we've always known that. Professor Shira is a well-known individual worldwide, uh, but he can't do it alone. And he is not the only person alone, but we need to know who the partners are in order to move forward uh, meetings like this and others, we're all going to the American Society of Reproductive Medicine uh, as soon as this meeting ends, uh, and that sustains the effort so we continue to move forward. So uh, each of these organizations, our own IFFS, the American Society of Reproductive Medicine, who has novel teaching programs that can be brought to that, Vigo, who has uh, toolkits and the likes of that, uh, all of us need to work together, and you've allowed us to work together on a sustaining basis. The embryology program uh, is simply the paradigm. Uh, it's one that we've looked at. It's amazing that uh, the Merck Foundation and your program, Rasha, has realized that it doesn't take training for five, ten people. It train, takes training for huge numbers of individuals because we expect to continually expand the capacity for in vitro fertilization. And once you do that, you have to have a sustaining number of trainees. Yes. Because if one leaves, maybe the entire program stops. Yes. So Americans are famous for coming in and building a small clinic, taking many photographs in a movie, and going back home and not returning again uh, until five years later. Meanwhile, the equipment is uh, no longer functioning. Uh, their goodwill and intention was not followed up. So you've allowed us to follow up. And finally, I just circle back to say, we are at a sustaining level here in which the world has noticed what is being done. 
for fertility capacity here in uh, Africa. Uh, at this stage, we've made so much publicity, we've made so much uh, uh, press in public relations that we are in a cannot fail situation, <laughs> both from the professional side and from the global health and what your own commitments are. People are looking at us, uh, and we're in a fishbowl, you know, and they are seeing what has been accomplished by uh, individuals here like uh, Professor Oshiro. As soon as we finish establishing the human uh, skills and the training, we will have to look at the infrastructure and how can we sustain that with a small, simple uh, structures in every, in every country uh, based on the commitment of the government and the Ministry of Health to sub, sub, su provide the place and the premises and uh, the uh, management uh, of, the, uh, of, the, uh, of the premises with the trained and skilled uh, uh, specialists. So uh, my second question will go to uh, Professor Ashiro, uh, the president of Africa Fertility Society. And um, he joined us the journey of Merck more than a mother from the start. I would like to, uh, to know now, uh, of course, we are, uh, for the first time, we are including uh, the giraffe uh, uh, members. So we can identify how can we roll out the Merck More Than a Mother and the fertility campaign in uh, these countries. So can you give us a small idea, how do you visualize this in, in five minutes? Thank you very much. Um, I cannot but, uh, without repeating what others have said, summarize it in the saying that Merck Foundation, through its Merck More Than a Mother um, programs have been a catalyst for the awareness and the rejuvenation for infertility elimination in Africa. And they deserve a round of applause for this. But without wasting time, let me say that the movement has to be in four areas. Uh, we can go from bottom to top or back. Right now, we're talking about awareness. My experience, and because we have first ladies here, they are the key instrument to this campaign because we all know that every country is governed by a president in Africa. But the presidents are the, uh, the head of government. But the real power behind every throne are the ladies. So we celebrate them, and we hope they will help in this campaign. Because in Nigeria, just by the first lady being aware of this and hosting Mark more than a mother, all the governors' uh, wives were there at this meeting, and now there is increased sensitization. But what are we sensitizing? The newspaper in Nigeria has now made me to write a column every week on preventive factors on infertility. Let me just give you a few that will shock you. A, a lady in my own clinic was going through IVF, which is what we want to develop to treat infertility, on four occasions, but she never made it. And then we said, okay, there must be something that these good embryos, these good embryos that have been selected normal through pre-implantation genetic diagnosis are not getting you pregnant. We did a test of what we call um, bioenergetic screening, and we found out that she had antimony, which is a heavy metal. And she said, oh, where did this come from? And we found out that these are present in the rubbers that are used to uh, cover the pedals of a car. When you drive the car and you press on the pedal or the brake, those robbers have antimony. 
And she said, yes. When she goes to drive, she removes her shoes and she drives with bare feet. When these were removed from her, four months later, she became pregnant without going through IVF. So, it is known worldwide now that heavy metals such as mercury and other ones can prevent infertility. We now wrote in the paper that women should not drive without putting, even if they have high heels, they should remove it and put a rubber slippers to drive. Another example, men using artificial sweeteners. Men spraying the room. Men working in the paint industries. So these are information that needs to go into the public. And each, each country needs to recruit people so we can prevent this. An example again is chlamydia infection through STD which is a silent infection. Most women don't know, so we have to find out because it causes miscarriage. So there, is, there are many like that which has come to the forefront. The second thing I want to say is that men, it's not that men are not ready to come up for infertility. Not that men know that there are options like a lot of men who have low sperm or no sperm at all, they know, but they are afraid to say. Now they know that there are treatments for it, they are coming to the clinics. Most men will come to me first and say, doctor, I think I have no sperm. Is there a treatment? Can you start? Then I will bring my wife. So men are now coming forward because there are options. So these are the things that through this campaign, we can put across to men. The next information I need to give has to be when Mac Foundation helps in this training, those who are trained should follow the law of Puto that those who have knowledge, they must pass the torch. Don't hide that knowledge to yourself because one knowledge to yourself is of no value. As I used to say when I was, as a professor, a professor is known by not being the only professor, but by how many professors he has been able to produce. So let's multiply, and if you do so, the spread will be all over Africa. Finally, the infrastructure that has been developed must be kept safe and maintained well, and continuous education and participation at meetings like these, where, like yesterday, we went through what strategy you can use to help yourself improve your centers. And I thank the first ladies who are here for showing interest in this area, because for years, the world, as Professor Simpson said, said that Africa, all we need to do is family planning. But in Uganda now, their president now realizes that it's not just family planning. You need population for economy and for growth. So infertility is also important to treat it. It's a human rights issue. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very, very much. And fertility treatment is a human right. I mean, it's a human right for every person to choose whether to have children or not and how many children and where, regardless the economic, of course, status of any person. So uh, my last question will go to Professor uh, Zing, uh, the president of Aspire, which is the Asian Societies of uh, uh, Reproductive Health. Um, so all the Asian uh, fertility societies are under the Aspire and uh, Professor Zing is uh, the, the uh, president. And of course, as you know, we have started for the first year to have Merck more than a mother in Asia. And we focus on five countries, which is Nepal, Bangladesh, Cambodia, Myanmar, and uh, um, Sri Lanka. And we started uh, to send candidates from each country for training. 
and we will have the angle, Asian angle for Merck more than a mother also to start to empower women and raise awareness and break the stigma. So can, can you give us uh, some feedback about the Asian challenges or the challenges of infertility access uh, in Asia? Uh, thank you, uh, Russia. I think from the video, I think the poor lady, uh, her name is Geraldine, uh, she lost the fertility potential because of miscarriage. I think the many pro problem probably due to infection, which cause uh, black tubes or maybe some uh, uterine synechia. So if this poor lady can receive early treatment as antibiotics, maybe uh, she can keep the fertility potential. I think nowadays, there's a wrong perception in fertility equivalent to IVF, which is wrong. We still can have low-cost infertility treatment. For example, now there's many, many uh, women with endometriosis. So if we can use the uh, laparoscopic surgery to remove the endometrioma or chocolate cyst, this lady maybe not, would not receive IVF. Of course, the Geraldine, uh, finally, if she can receive IVF treatment, she also can get pregnant. Yeah. The other thing is such as uh, PCOS. Uh, PCOS ranks number two indication for those patients with uh, infertility. So, but if we can modify the lifestyle, for example, reduce the BMI, reduce body weight, also with a very low cost medication, the lady may ovulation, so they can conceive. And uh, the other thing is we can use some uh, surgical approach, such as hysteroscopy, to remove the uterine uh, polyps or remove the Asherman syndrome. So that is very cheap, very easy to, uh, to enhance the female's fertility potential. Uh, I think the challenges ahead of us may be new, but the values upon which we depend, such as hard work and collaboration, curiosity and research, these things are old. I understand the growth and the development of Aspire, uh, or uh, 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 any society in Africa or some Pacific region, you just mentioned uh, uh, Sri Lanka, Malaysia, etc. Is to this growth and development is never a given. It must be earned. So uh, I think the approach is. Uh, should be based on seven C's, seven C's. The first C is communication. Sec second one is cooperation, collaboration, coherence, commitment, continuity, and consistency. So as a uh, caliber, as uh, the president of Aspire, and also uh, has been the dean of medical school for nine years. I would like to cooperate with uh, Merck uh, Foundation. I think my role uh, is to pray as a designer, educator, and most importantly, a cheerleader to uh, serve the society uh, we rely on. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very, very, very much, Professor Deng. And of course, uh, I would like very much to emphasize on your point that there is a big difference between fertility treatment and IVF treatment. That's why I insist to develop and train the, the, tra the fertility specialist first because there is a lot of interventions to treat fertility before even go through the IVF. And then, of course, in the future, you can have the IVF center. But developing a small fertility clinic, it's a very simple, does not even cost anything, and it needs only a well-trained fertility specialist to raise awareness about prevention and treatment and do the interventions, the small interventions needed. Mm -hmm.